The DA Federal Council Chairperson Helen Ziller finds herself in hot water once again over a tweet in which she says that there are more racist laws today than there were under apartheid. Two members of the party, the members of parliament, Tanganani Gumbi uh, and Dear Gauteng Provincial Legislator Member Rune Ramulefo, uh, have since taken the matter up with party leader John Steenhays and asking that uh, Zilla's tweets be investigated by the Federal Legal Commission. For more on the story, we're joined via Skype by Dear Gauteng Provincial Legislator Member Rune Ramulefo. Uh, Kume, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. What have you sent to the leadership of the DA uh, with regard to this issue? Oh, good morning and thanks for the opportunity. I've written to the DA leader and the DA deputy federal chair, uh, you know, asking them to refer Helen Zillet to Federal Legal Commission to investigate the tweets uh, on the basis that I believe that uh, they are in contravention of the DA federal constitution and the DA uh, social media policy. So that is what I've done, uh, which I believe that, uh, I mean, through the acknowledgement from Thomas Walters, uh, they indicated that they are, they are referring the matter to the FLC. Why did it need to come to this? What sort of conversations are going on in the background within the Democratic Alliance about the continued inclusion of Helen Ziller in the leadership structures when she, she has had her time in the party? Yeah, I mean, she was elected and also, I mean, came back and be re-elected, which is a democracy. Uh, but uh, all of us, regardless of what position one occupies, we have to abide by the DA federal constitution, including DA uh, policies. And in this instance, where we feel like there's violation of either one of the two, uh, we have to follow our due processes and making sure that uh, there's no one who is uh, treated uh, exclusively. Uh, as, I mean, all our memberships are equal. Uh, there's no platinum or bold membership in the DA. So any ordinary member or any public reps or any other position which we occupy, we have to subject ourselves to the DA, I mean, constitution. And as in this instance, I'm of the view that uh, uh, that has been, you know, violated. And that's why we refer to internal structures to actually uh, probe or do necessary investigation. I suppose the question to ask you is why now? Because it's not the first time uh, she has been found in, in this kind of situation. Uh, from my side, uh, I'm ra I mean, I'm raising it because it's actually something which has been done now. It's a recent thing. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, whatever she has posted, uh, the leadership has to take action. Uh, and that's why I'm referring it to, I mean, to the party. Uh, so that, uh, you know, we ensure that we adhere uh, to our own, uh, I mean, constitution, which have to guide all of us. So this constitution is not only meant for some, and that is why we uh, emphasize the rule of law. So uh, that is the reason why I actually referred it uh, to the uh, party leadership to ensure that they adhere to that. And also we're going to ensure that whenever there's a decision taken uh, or any uh, recommendations made, uh, the leadership has to ensure that they adhere to going forward. You might have sent this complaint in relation to what you say you're concerned about the adherence to your constitutional uh, uh, stipulations. But you know it's, it's created a Twitter storm, right? Uh, there's such conversation about it. Uh, what, what has it why has it taken people within the DA so long to, to respond to this problem? I, I may not say it took us so long. It's probably us uh, following our right processes. And that's why we're saying, uh, based on the DA uh, internal processes, uh, we're still within our own right, using our own uh, due processes. And uh, uh, we, we, I mean, as much as, uh, you know, uh, people might be expecting an urgent action, but we still need to ensure that we follow due processes. And I believe that uh, the party is going to do so. Is your is your are constitutional considerations your only uh, a point of your the only problematic point for you, or are you are you disgusted by the content of the tweets? Yes, that's why when we make referral, because our constitution don't make such a provision. So when we, I mean, uh, I for one, I feel like you know the, the the tweets are demeaning. They undermine and try to rewrite the, you know the history in an incorrect way. Uh, but that's why our, I mean, our constitution don't allow such. Uh, we recognize the injustice of the past, and we all need to, I mean, commit ourselves to build, uh, you know, one South Africa for all. And uh, social cohesion is also core uh, 
So we believe that uh, as this is also a violation of our own internal processes. The party has to do something because the party do have uh, some sort of guidelines on how we need to behave, how we need to conduct ourselves. So anyone who then, uh, you know, found guilty or misconduct needs to be charged and we need to see action because that is what, uh, I mean, the constitution guide all of us. And all of us, we've pledged, we signed, uh, you know, a, I mean, membership platform and we said we're going to abide by the DA constitution. So whatever we say, either in public or in private, we need to make sure that it's in line with the DA constitution. Over and above that, we also have the country's constitution, which we also commit that we're going to abide by. Can I ask you a question? What what have you found specifically? What what specifically have you found unsavory in Helen Zilla's tweets? I mean, we can't compare uh, any apartheid laws with the uh, I mean laws which uh, are made after democratic uh, I mean South Africa. Uh, that on its own, especially for us black people, where we were denied access to opportunities, uh, you know, we were segregated. And to make such a, you know, a comparison, I think someone is really undermining also the, you know, the, the, the fight which many people lost their lives, you know, the process with which some people, I mean, actually broke their families. Some people are still in tears because they lost their families. They don't know whether they're still alive, whether they're not. And I mean, that's something which is despicable. And I don't think, uh, you know, someone with a, a proper mind can look at that and actually make such comparison. But maybe those ones who might have enjoyed, uh, you know, the luxury of apartheid, they feel like it was better then. But for many South Africans who were denied access and opportunity, we feel like, you know, apartheid is not even a good thing. It was even declared, uh, you know, a crime against humanity. So we feel like uh, that's something which we must not support at all. Uh, you know, there are sort of wounds uh, which uh, some people feel like for them, because they were happy, then uh, they are comfortable. But we don't think that is, a, I mean, something which one can make comparison with. So the inequalities which we have, uh, I mean, by and large, there is a result of the, you know, apartheid system which was designed to divide people along racial lines and which also divided people based on, you know, tribes. And that's why, you know, when we talk about forging uh, social cohesion, because we want to make sure that we deal with the, you know, tribalism which was instilled, racism which was also uh, instilled then to say those were something which were wrong. But now we are all South Africans. We can go and forge one South Africa with one common goal, dealing with poverty, dealing with unemployment, and dealing with inequalities, where all South Africans can look forward and say, let's improve the quality of life. And that is what some of us are committed to do. And we should not actually be distracted by a certain few who might even feel like maybe they enjoyed the luxury of the past, but we're saying that is wrong. We need to recognize the past injustices, but with the focus on making sure that we build one South Africa going forward. What are the time frames? When do you think the leadership will get back to you? Uh, I just got an acknowledgement that the matter has been referred to Federal Legal Commission. So obviously I will wait and update on where the matter is uh, in due course. So, But for now, I can say uh, Thomas Waters has acknowledged the, the receipt of my email. All right, just to end our conversation on a different topic altogether, uh, you in the Gauteng Provincial Legislature, what is your sense as opposition in terms of the, uh, uh, the provincial government's response to COVID-19? What is your position? I think we currently, uh, the provincial government has responded well, uh, but uh, the fight is still on. We just need to continue encouraging, uh, you know, all the people in this province to you know, follow the I mean, regulations, uh, maintain social distancing and make sure that uh, uh, we wash our hands, uh, we put our masks. Uh, so that's something which we, we're encouraging people to do. Uh, government has managed to do what it can uh, to I mean, contain the spread. And as we all know that we don't necessarily have a vaccination now, but what we can do is to follow and adhere to the regulations as set out and take all our own personal and individual responsibility. And uh, I, I think also when you look at the schooling now, there's it's another factor that so far, um, you know, the, the process has been going well. We're also urging the department to make sure that they start to put necessary preparations for the next phase, you know, where we'll be having more learners. But for phase one, where they're grade seven and grade 12, uh, I mean, based on the school visit I've made, uh, I'm very happy with uh, what the measures put in place. But we just need to make sure that we put extra measures when we are preparing for the next phase. Kume Ramalipo, thank you so much for talking to us this morning. You are welcome.
Mr. Ramulipo is with the DA Gauteng Provincial uh, Legislature member. He's a member there and uh, he was talking to us about uh, a letter he has sent to the party leadership regarding the racist rants of uh, Ms. Helen Zilla on Twitter.